to 2024 e-commerce trends you and your students need to know. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Darlene Kirby, and I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager at Stukent. I'm thrilled to be here with you today. As we begin, I want to encourage you to use the chat feature. Go ahead and start by sharing where you're from and one question you have about e-commerce. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the chat. Our amazing team is standing by to answer your questions in real time throughout the event. All right, looks like we already have Nichelle joining us and Abigail and Bob. Awesome. Looks like we have someone from London. Welcome, Joseph. Awesome. We also have from Calgary. It looks like it's snowing there. It's also snowing in Idaho Falls today, so we feel you. Awesome. We got people from all over. We got Joe from Michigan and Mike from Oregon. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming. If you can't stick around for all of today's session, don't worry. We plan to share the recording with all of the attendees along with any links and resources shared throughout the event. We will be having a Q&A session at the end of Kyle's presentation. So um, we'll be ex excited to share any questions you have in the chat. And this goes without saying, but please be respectful and polite when commenting. Awesome. Well, before we start this event, we wanted to share some other upcoming events that we have with StuKent. On March 22nd, we're going to join us for the Analytics and Research Boost event, where you'll receive insights, resources, and opportunities to network. On March 29th, we will be hosting Fostering an Entrepreneurial Ecosystem. It'll be a panel led by Jen Riley, this panel will be discussing how universities and their communities can better collaborate to bring about entrepreneurial opportunities for students. On April 5th, join Manoush Rasadi as she speaks to 2024 AI in education trends, how AI has impacted my educator role. And also join us in person from on June 12th through 14th in Salt Lake City, as we have ProfCon 2024. At this event, you'll be able to discover and share the freshest insights into marketing, business, and communication education. Now, without further ado, let me introduce and welcome Dr. Kyle Allison to the stage. Dr. Kyle Allison, renowned as the Doctor of Digital Strategy, brings a wealth of expertise from both industry and academia in the areas of e-commerce, business strategy, operations, digital analytics, and digital marketing. Notable industry experience includes pivotal roles at organizations such as Best Buy, Dick Sporting Goods, Dickies, and the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Dr. Allison has been a professor, mentor, and played a pivotal role in curriculum development, course creation, and mentorship of doctoral candidates as a DBA doctoral chair. He has several published works that combine academic theory with practical field knowledge, placing emphasis on real world of applicability, and the attainment of educational objectives. Dr. Allison's educational background is extensive as his professional accomplishments, holding a doctorate of business administration, an MBA, a master of science in project management, and a bachelor's degree in communication studies. Dr. Allison is also the author of Stukent's newest courseware, e-commerce, Essentials of Online Business. Kyle, the time is yours. All right, darling, thank you. Well, I'm so excited that so many of you are here from all over the world. Uh, that just makes me very happy and excited. Um, really excited to be here today. Uh, you know, first off, Stu Kent, a fantastic organization. You know, they really are focused on modern education with modern topics. And so for us to partner together to discuss e-commerce is essential, uh, is important. And today we're going to talk about a few things, what e-commerce is, where it's going, and why is it important to teach this in the classroom? So welcome. To e-commerce essentials of online business, e-commerce trends you and your students need to know. So once again, welcome. The agenda today, we're going to talk about e-commerce today, give some statistics, some insights, what's going on in e-commerce. We're going to talk about e-commerce trends 2024, this year and beyond. Then we'll give a little bit of an overview of our courseware and how we're going to teach these trends and further trends that will develop over time into the classroom. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So e-commerce today, but first, before we get into numbers and statistics about what's going on in the industry, it's very important first for us to understand what e-commerce is and what it's not. 
because there's a perception out there what e-commerce could be or is. You know, for some in business, we feel like what it's not is an island on its own operation, and it's not. It doesn't live on its own little kind of sphere in the world of business. It doesn't have its own island of just people operating a website. It's, it's more than that. What it is, it's an interdisciplinary business function where all business functions converge. Every single business function that you can think of impacts directly or indirectly with e-commerce, marketing, sales, customer service, obviously IT, you've got supply chain that's critical and more. So there's a world where e-commerce fits at the nucleus of all these business disciplines around it. The second thing that it's not is that only the technical savvy individuals can work in e-commerce. That's not true. Now, there is a big technical skill set of e-commerce in some positions, but it's more than that. Any business or technical person, student of any discipline can work in e-commerce. And I've got some different job titles and examples to share in a little bit. So it's a broader field than just being a technical individual. Some people think it's just art with a little bit of functionality. Meaning a website looks nice. It's designs, it's marketing, it's advertising. And that's a key part of it. But it's more than that. It's a lot of art and science. So what it really is, is the true convergence of art and science. As a multitude of business strategy, where you get to incorporate technology, but people, processes, and what I love to think about in e-commerce is thought leadership and innovation. People with an art and science kind of a thought process, or if you're on the art side, creative side, and or technical side of science, these is where this is where the best of the best converge to build an online experience and business. So we'll talk more about that. But first, we wanna have a little fun. We have a few poll questions throughout this webinar today. And Hi. for the first one, yes. Sorry, don't wanna interrupt you, but I don't think you're sharing your screen, but we'll do the poll question right after. Let me try this again. Let me try it one more time then. One second. Oh, I apologize. Can you now see my screen? We can see your screen. Perfect. Excellent. I apologize for that. Anyways, long story short, here's the slide I was just on about what it's not and what it is. And so quick view on that. But again, the whole goal of understanding e-commerce is that it's interdisciplinary. Many business functions have an opportunity to be a part of this business model. And there's any type of individual of interest, whether it's the science and art side of business or both that can converge the work in e-commerce. Now though, some questions for fun. Poll question one, what do you believe would be the worldwide e-commerce sales by 2027? Just a thought, is it A, 20 trillion, B, 12.3 trillion, C, 8.1 trillion, or will it be endless, infinity and beyond, D? Put your vote, your answer into the chat, or to the poll, excuse me, and we'll see what we come up with. We'll give it here in just a couple seconds and see what people think. All right, we're trending at 12.3 as the highest, at 40% of the answers. All right, it's still going. Got a few people thinking infinity and beyond. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Endless, endless sales, be terrific. Okay, I think we got most of our answers. So let's go with it. If you selected, the answer is C, $8.1 trillion worldwide. Let's talk about that. Here is what I like to see to show how important e-commerce is to us in the world of business. From 2014 to 2026, we're growing to $8 trillion. Um, that is amazing. Uh, it's a global business. You know, It's a global audience that we can market to and build business with. If you see the trajectory in just the last 10 years up in here, the projection of hitting close to $7 trillion in 2024, it's grown exponentially. So what does that mean for us, though? We have all types of opportunities also on social media e-commerce. This is more of a brand new territory that a lot of businesses are trying to figure out. Over the last three, four years, this has emerged as a key additional area of e-commerce business. A lot of brands and companies are trying to find that balance between, do I sell on a website, market on a website, brand ourselves on a website? How do I balance that out with my social media strategy? But oh yeah, we can also sell on social media. So this is also growing exponentially up to the 
in January 2026. So over the next few years, you're seeing both e-commerce itself as a website grow and also our social commerce as well. E-commerce is poised to capture 41% of global retail sales by 2027, up from 18% in 2017. The share of business between brick and mortar environments and e-commerce is growing. This is another area we need to understand that, that kind of uh, change and momentum that's happened over the last few years and it's going to continue to change. We're close to almost half, if you will, of sales are going to come from the e-commerce channel. And we've seen the challenge out there with retail stores either really embracing that and doing very well or a decline in their brick and mortar stores, unfortunately, and even some going out of business because of the uh, ability to not be up to speed with the changes in the e-commerce environment. So we need trained professionals out there understanding that e-commerce mindset, how to build strategies to compete in that environment while still running a brick and mortar environment. E-commerce sales increased by 3% in Europe and 7% in both in the US and Asia in 2022. Growth globally, every single part of the world that operates an e-commerce presence is seeing growth and momentum. Global e-commerce growth is expected to achieve a 9% compound growth rate through 2027, more than double the projected brick and mortar retail growth of a moderate 4%. It doesn't mean brick and mortar in-store experiences are here to go away, that's not it. It's now though the, the need for us to absorb that experience, both in-store and online, to make sure we have a cohesive experience for our students. And that's something we definitely touch on in this courseware. With all that growth, okay, we, we get it. E-commerce is growing exponentially. What are we trying to convey to you today? The need for talent. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment in this industry will continue to rise, reaching almost 450,000 new jobs by 2026. What does this mean? Opportunities for you if you're a student out there, or you as a professor understanding the importance of this type of course and to really nurture the environment for those who are interested in this space, that there are jobs on the horizon. It's a growing field, which for a college student is very attractive. What are the types of e-commerce jobs out there? There's a, a, quite a few different types of jobs. These are just some of them. Like I said earlier, it's a very interdisciplinary function. You don't have to be the web developer to work on e-commerce. That is a job in e-commerce, but there's many different areas of interest that someone could, you know, find out their passion, their skill set, and apply to this field. Supply chain, jobs in e-commerce dropship, which dropship means uh, managing the fulfillment for a retailer, but from your own fulfillment center. Fulfillment roles in general, the warehouse, logistics, so many different things about managing the goods, demand, and supply of our e-commerce business. Web analytics. Very important. Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, having real strong an an uh, analysts to actually drive the insights of the organization and the e commerce business is essential and on the rise. IT, many roles. I'll just say that. Information technology, so many different IT jobs that help build, sustain, and optimize a website and e commerce business. Digital marketing, essential to this. Website designers and developers. Inbound user experience called UX, those who manage the functionality of the website, on-site search, navigation, personalization, et cetera. There's personalization specialists who just specialize in that, graphic designers out there for all the artwork, campaigns, and obviously the social media integration as well. Then there's a pivotal role in e-commerce of customer service and customer experience. Customer service to handle, of course, you know, online order issues or you know, praises and complaints potentially. But customer service now is a connection and we teach us in the courseware about being part of that relationship building with consumers. From a marketing perspective, sales are just good loyalty. And then merchandising, critical part of e-commerce business. Buyers, merchants, online merchandisers, people who manage the pricing and analytics, and many more. So whether you are in the art side of your interest, the science side, or a little bit of both, you have a role in e-commerce if you're interested. So that's the overview of the industry today, where it's going, uh, you know, from a monetary perspective and where the jobs are as well in this industry. So it's a pretty exciting field to look at as a potential career interest. Now, though, let's look at some of the trends happening, some of the fun, exciting stuff that I get jazzed up about just thinking about this industry here in 2024 and beyond. But first, another poll question. Which of these trends do you think are on this list? So I'm about to go over six to seven different trends that are taking place right now. Which one of these do you think is on the list? A the demise of Amazon. B, the return of VHS tapes for sale online. C, 
two minute shipping or D artificial intelligence kind of a curveball question, but feel free to jump into the poll and see what you think. Yeah, didn't take that long to get to 100% artificial intelligence. Absolutely. Of course it is. I just wanted to have a little fun today, but you never know. VHS tapes, collectibles may go back to business at some point. Um, two minute shipping, you never know. We'll see what Jeff, Jeff Bezos does. But yes, D, artificial intelligence. We'll get to that one here shortly. These are the seven topics I thought would be relevant today. Now, there are other areas of e-commerce business happening. Don't get me wrong. This is such a fast moving, exciting uh, back end, front end industry to be a part of. It's so many different things you can do strategically, te technologically, with your consumers, uh, marketing, all that stuff. Let's talk about quite a few of these. We're going to talk about AR, augmented reality shopping experiences, blockchain for supply chain transparency, customized loyalty programs, an eco-friendly e-commerce environment and business model. We need advanced cybersecurity and data, data privacy today, personalized subscription models, and then lastly, of course, artificial intelligence. Saving that for the end because that's our buzzword these days, right? First, augmented reality shopping experiences. Now, AR, augmented reality, very simple example I can think of is when you go to, let's say, Amazon and look for a piece of furniture that you want to see how it fits in your room. So you take the webcam, show your room, and you see the actual size of what it may look like in your room, right? You have silhouettes, which is like outfits for a shopping, a clothing brand online. What does that look like for the most part? A lot of 3D renderings. Um, this has been around for, for several years, but what we're seeing is an emergence of that need for the online environment. We're trying to transition now from just static images to more 3D, which static is 2D. We're trying to move into more of an interactive element of customization. And so it's a really great opportunity for online businesses to engage with their consumers. So transforming how consumers shop online with that virtual try it before you buy experience. One of the things we can do here strategically is minimize returns. If someone can online get a better look and feel what that product's going to look like or maybe seem to be in size and shape, et cetera, we minimize returns. Because if you ever bought something you thought maybe clothing would fit or something for your house that you thought was bigger or smaller than it was, and then you get it, you're like, wow, this wasn't what I thought it was like online, then you go return it. We're trying to minimize that here too. So it's a strategy of that, but really just influencing the sale. So we're enhancing product visualization, leading to higher conversion rates, which ultimately is purchases and sales. So like the examples I gave you, we can do this for many different industries, but you see it a lot today in clothing and furniture, but you're gonna see this more in other commodities over time. It increases consumer engagement and satisfaction. We're going to see consumers enjoy these experiences. Not just buy from us, but also refer us to others. You know, one of the, those make or break moments as an online consumer is, how good was your experience on the website? One of these, the courseware that we teach in this courseware is the experience part. How important is that great interaction elements, engagement with your consumers? Uh, without that, you're gonna have a static website, which is images and price. If another competitor can do something more interactive, like augmented reality, they're going to win more times than not. So that's an emerging area, a lot more with that. But I think it's an important trend to understand in this industry. The second one, blockchain for uh, supply chain transparency. You know, blockchain is not just crypto. Uh, and it's not just finance. Yes, it is. But it's not just that. You know, blockchain is an opportunity for us in e-commerce to truly focus on really building transparent supply chain reporting ledgers and information so it's a decentralized system tamper proof ledgers enhance supply chain transparency why is this important well with the flow of goods that happens in e-commerce you know products that are coming in uh, to the receiving to the warehouse and being sold online shipped to customers and then we also teach in the course a whole chapter on supply chain in general how we build online demand and fulfill that with many different uh, fulfillment options which whether it's direct shipping drop ship third-party shipping etc but behind that, though, is this technology of blockchain where we're trying to understand, are we going to do better with real-time tracking? There are instances out there, and I've seen it firsthand, where some brands may misship something and not know where it's at. You know, that's not good. So we need better tracking, right, where blockchain can help us be better at that visibility. Real-time reporting to figure out where is a product at and it's tracking to the customer, et cetera. What it does, it reduces fraud and errors and provides a single source of truth. It's a very consolidation type technology, but the whole importance of this is, is to manage our budgets, right? Supply is our cash as an organization. So 
whether you're the brand or the retailer buying from another brand, uh, that supply is critical. So knowing all of that with more transparency, what blockchain is all about. And empowers ethical consumerism by fit, by verifying authenticity. We also can ensure that customers feel that we can trust who we're buying from, right? If you've ever had something in your experience where you bought something online and, and it never showed up, or you know the shipping window said on the website three to five days, but then it took two weeks, we want to get better at that as an e-commerce business. We want to be more forthright on how long it's going to take for something to get to you as a consumer. The pandemic made a supply chain crisis. We're all aware of that. We're just getting out of that. I mean, we're kind of, we're kind of recovering from that in this the, right now and beyond. But while we're recovering with, with the actual supply being available, we're learning how to get better at that reporting mechanism and tracking to fulfill promises. That's what it's really all about. The next, customized loyalty programs. Customize is the key word. Loyalty programs are not new. How we're going about managing them and building e-commerce loyalty programs is what's changing. Uh, loyalty programs today generally involve a mass audience, right? If you think about it, we all have, you know, for some loyalty programs, and it's also not just e-commerce sites, it's food websites too. You know, if you have anything you do with ordering food online or on your app, that's e-commerce, by the way. So your Starbucks app, DoorDash is e-commerce. Any online transaction is considered e-commerce in this field. But rewards programs today are, are very static for the most part. I use that word quite a bit, I know but it's very common you get the same rewards i do kind of thing but now we're trying to be more personalized with that we're trying to give you an actual incentive that maybe if you buy a certain type of product more often you get more deeper discounts on that item i will give you more recommendations now for things i've seen you buy in the past or have looked at to really tailor a better experience and customize these reward programs based on how often you buy from me right maybe i shouldn't penalize you if you only you know come to my business one time a week versus that person who comes three times a week. Maybe I still give you an incentive to come back once a week if that's your average frequency. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is connect the dots between great loyalty programs for everybody, but also more personalized, customized loyalty programs that really speak to someone on a personal level that offer them rewards that really give them a more of an incentive to buy on a personal level. So that's emerging in the uh, industry as well. The next one, eco-friendly e-commerce. There's definitely been a shift in the mindset of the consumer and how important it is to be an envir environmentally friendly brand. Um, sustainability, corporate social responsibility, that's not new, but how we integrate that into e-commerce is newer. The last few years, I've seen a shift for customers who prefer products, right, that are eco-friendly, especially in the world of food, like organic food, uh, cleaning supplies, but even things like, you know, appliances, all the way to vehicles, of course. With that shift in the consumer's, you know, desire and this social cause that's at the forefront of us of sustainability and eco-conscious customers, we have to build an environment of environmentally friendly, uh, both experience and products. Now, the products can already be there, but are you talking about it in the right way? Do you have the website built and speaking to the customer about how you believe in sustainability? What are you really doing for the environment? Maybe it's your products, but also you as an organization. Are you recycling your goods correctly? Are you doing things from a not from a charitable perspective, but not advocating that? We need to be good stewards of green marketing in this environment. And look at that opportunity, though, also on the back end, when I say back end, supply chain on how we handle these products, recycling them or reusing them, and then allowing our customers to know about that. Building that rapport allows us to really strengthen that relationship with our consumers. And that happens both with our marketing from a green marketing perspective, speaking about what we're doing to the back end of supply and how we're handling the, that merchandise to the best of our ability. Right. There's some things that just aren't as easy to be environmentally friendly as others. It's all the way through the experience of what we're doing as an organization. So the more of that we can do, the more we're already doing that in our operation. We also have to build that into our e-commerce experience for customers to really understand that. That's a great connection point today for strategy. But also the next one, advanced cybersecurity and data privacy. It's an interesting world we live in today where we all know as consumers that our information is being used. Okay, if you fill out an online profile to a website or credit card, or if you bought something, there's a transaction record out there of you or a data point about you. Um, but what we wanna do is ensure that, that we're, we're obviously one, it's secure. And then two, we're not having our information used for the wrong purposes. So e-commerce sites, the, 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 the authentic ones, the transparent ones, know to do that. 
but sometimes it is a challenge, right? The more um, that the hackers get sophisticated, let's call it what it is, breaches become uh, relevant, the more we've got to learn to be better at cybersecurity. So we're becoming more and more advanced in cybersecurity. So this is where our IT friends step in. If you're an information technology student or a professor, this is what something you can definitely teach about the e-commerce business. You are building not just that cybersecurity and data privacy, uh, you know, for your for your your brand or organization, you're also helping build that trust with consumers. You know, IT has a role here to help bridge that gap between those skeptic customers who don't have trust in the newer brand versus those we can create loyal, trusted customers. So the better you can help us protect the information of our customers the ability for you know not having breaches happen and all the cybersecurity methods out there that increases the uh the trust factor with consumers and that's part of the strategy that we need to understand and the value of that kind of work we also have to comply though with global data privacy regulations uh you know one thing we teach in the course is a whole chapter on e-commerce security solutions and technology and we do talk about data privacy laws in there like the gdpr in europe we talk about the ccpa the California Consumer Privacy Act in California and a few others, but we're seeing this emerge as well over the last just four, four to five years where there's more laws being developed at a local and national level across the world to protect consumers information. So it's a balance between needing that data as a, as a marketer now or a strategist online to use it for our you know, use cases around marketing, but also protect it from a transactional perspective, preventing fraud, et cetera. So it's a fine line balance. And there's a lot of internal organizational culture around that as well that we talk about in the courseware. But it's very important. It's a very emerging area and will continue to be emerging for many years to come. The next is personalized uh, subscription models. If you kind of see a theme to some of these around like loyalty programs and now subscription models is that, again, loyalty programs are not new and subscription models are not new, but the use of them and how we build experiences is changing to more personalized, okay? So again, I could have a general subscription model and a subscription model, again, I think about my dog food I buy for my dogs. I got three dogs, two schnauzers and a chihuahua, right? They share the same dog food. Um, I buy from Amazon and it's a subscription. Once a month I get you know, my, you know, my dog food shipped. It's great. A lot of stuff we wanna buy like food, uh, toiletries, you know, the, the essentials is, is a good thing for subscription. And it allows us as consumers a convenience to just not have to worry about it. We know we're going to rebuy it anyway, so let that be its thing. But now, though, what we're looking at is, again, the subscription model being more to the consumer preferences. And maybe, just maybe, let's say I've been buying that dog food for a while at $50 a, 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 an order. But there's another competitor that comes in with the same type of flavor, but it's now cheaper. I may want to know about that, right? Because in subscription, I'm not really remembering it until it hits my front door. And if I want to cancel it, that's when I'll remember, or I just keep it going. But maybe I'm, I'm strategic as maybe an Amazon or somebody else to come in and say, here's a brand just like yours, but it's a, a new brand, but it's got these new ingredients in it. Do you want to check it out? And maybe you want to change your product. Stay on subscription, but change your product. That's if you're a retailer. Now, if you're a brand, you're not going to obviously bring a competitor in, but that's just a small example there as well. So we're going to use that with our uh, purchase history, but AI is also a big part of this personalization. Okay, looking at your your habits and what you bought, but also making recommendations for other products. I mean, we got to get more uh, subscriptions out there. Subscriptions are sales that we can count on for the most part until someone stops that subscription. So we're looking for those opportunities in business in general, but especially online for repeat sales. How can I continue that momentum of growth? This is an area that is being looked at as an opportunity to grow. Um, and again, it fosters loyalty. And again, you can predict your revenue streams. So again, another area of strategy in e-commerce. Now, finally, advanced AI in e-commerce, right? Can't talk, can't have any kind of digital webinar. We don't talk about artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence in e-commerce, I hate to break the news to you, has been around for a little while. Personalization has been around for um, over 15 years. However, it's getting better. And it's, you know, e AI and e-commerce was one of the first kind of online businesses or digital channels to really embrace AI. So today we're using it for more than just personalized products. You know, those recommended products that say recommended for you, you may also like Amazon's sales on their website, 30 to 40% come from those recommended products. They've been doing it for years. Other websites as well, e-commerce sites, Walmart, Target, 
been doing it for years, but we're doing more than that though now. We're not just recommending products, we're recommending experiences again. You may see a homepage versus me seeing a homepage, right? Over time, let's say you're looking at sporting goods and I'm looking at consumer electronics. So on the homepage, you know what I might do for you? I'm gonna give you a sporting goods experience with all the sporting goods brands that you prefer and products because I've seen your history. I think that's better for you. And I see a homepage full of electronics items because I'm the technology geek, geek, if you will, and I am to see those kinds of things. Then we go deeper than that too. I also look at the e-commerce experience from, you know, where did you start on the website to where did you end on the website? And then look at personalization throughout that experience. This is my favorite part of e-commerce disclaimer is personalization, of course, and how we use AI to build those experiences. I can also use this to predict trends and optimize inventory. You know, AI today is very supply chain focused. How can I do better at forecasting that demand, right? To bring in the supply to match that. You know, this is where we can work with our supply chain demand forecasters. So if you're a supply chain operations management student or professor out there, this is where we can converge as a strategy. Here's where we can learn how that position and that function of demand forecasting or, you know, buying even merchandise planning can come in and really optimize inventory, position it correctly, right? Fulfillment correctly. Um, we are better at that because we are looking at AI and how we predict potential experiences that drive sales. We can also look at some back end processes, right? Um, we can do things obviously like any other business model in e commerce, you know, automating tasks in customer service, uh, reporting, if you will, improving efficiency. So it's not all just front end consumer experience, great marketing and user experience stuff. It is, that's my favorite part. But it's a lot of back end stuff too. So if you're process oriented, if you're very much focused on project planning as well, uh, strategic planning, this is a great way to optimize that. At the end of the day, we're learning from our data though, and we're improving shopping experiences continuously. Advanced AI today is taking what we've done and le learning how to do it better with the tools that are coming out as well. E-commerce is a foundational business. The technology that's out there is at times other platforms that we integrate. So we do teach in the class too how the e-commerce ecosystem works, that there's a foundation platform that's kind of like the bedrock of everything that you would do for, let's say, the foundation of your home. Then we talk about how other technologies come in with the fulfillment side, customer service. We talk about how the marketing side kind of sit on top of the house, right? you got to build your rooms. you got to build your appliances, the plumbing, right? So we do touch on that, not as much in an information technology aspect. We talk about the programming and coding. Because this is a business minded courseware, but to be a business minded student and professional, you need to understand these systems at a very general level, because you're going to speak to your IT and business partners about these things to really operate your business. So we're using AI today to help understand both the front end, the customer experience and back end, the operational part of it uh, a lot. So those are our trends for the most part that I wanted to make sure that we kind of highlight today. The book and the courseware go into this detail, but it's exciting. Um, I think this is a field that you will find that has so many layers of opportunities, um, different, you know, different types of people who think in different ways, different types of strategy, and uh, it's a really exciting field. So with that said, I do have to give my, my, my own quote on this. Artificial intelligence does not replace human intelligence. It augments human innovation. So if I were to sum up all the things happening, with AI right now is that we, we we get into this mindset that AI is in some instances, I've been to other conferences and been reading a lot about this, is that AI is here to take over. It's not. It's here to help us. And this is what I want us to embrace in this industry of e-commerce, you know, and anything else we do in analytics or any other, you know, digital business. Um, artificial intelligence does not replace our thought leadership. It augments though our human innovation. It allows us to look at things differently consider different options, elevate our business models, but do it with our own thought with that AI prompt and rule in mind. A lot of things in e-commerce are rule-based, meaning that we build rules into the technology to do whatever we want it to do. So that's great. Let the artificial intelligence do that, but let's us be the thought leaders behind it. So at the end of the day, no matter where you are in this e-commerce ecosystem or business and of interest, you know, embrace the technology, but we are still strong strategists behind the scenes making things happen. So with that said, I appreciate your guys' time on the trends. Now, I just want to give a, give a, give a quick overview of the courseware. So you're familiar with what this, uh, this offers to you as a potential uh, uh, adoption to your cl uh, classroom. 
This would fit in any management, marketing, or business administration program. You know, depending on your particular program or digital marketing program as well. Uh, because again, it's it's talking more than just marketing. It's talking about all these other areas and the overall ecosystem of online business. So again, the coursework takes you through all the essentials, introducing you to strategy, communications, creative, and so much more. The key cornerstone I want to make sure we emphasize again, the wall say one more time, is that it's a focus of interdisciplinary approach to the core functions of a commerce business model. You're going to be able to take this course and this course we're going to have a very rounded appreciation, knowledge, and familiarity with all the different facets of e commerce business. We'll introduce channel partnerships, cross functional support, and partnership with supply chain, customer service, IT, marketing, and much more. Now, a couple of pieces that are actually from the book, you know, some, some standout um, areas of content that I think are unique to this course where versus any other, uh, uh, and it's very limited in my opinion, e-commerce um, courseware out there. You know, um, there's these four C's of, of e-commerce that, that exist today. Uh, the shift of online consumer behavior. You know, the reason why we also feel like this book is the right time is because in e-commerce today, we're seeing a new landscape, not just with supply, not just with the growth of comp competition and entrepreneurism, by the way, more people are building their own websites or selling online as a new way of living. There's also a, a change of consumer behavior. So the notion you only have to have offer one of these and offer it very well is gone, right? Now we have convenience, communication, capabilities, and care. I'm gonna walk through these very briefly. The, the courseware goes into more detail. Customers want convenience. They already did, but they expect it now. Not just a nice to have, but a must have. You know, picking up uh, online order, but pick up at store, right? Where you either go in or you buy online and wait curbside. That was elevated at the pandemic because it was the only option for some retailers to sell online and still get business at the store, okay? And food also, deli uh, food delivery heightened, but also the ability to pick up at a restaurant. And for restaurants, actually, it was the only way to sustain during the pandemic. So convenience though, other areas of convenience, faster shipping, we, we are we're at a heightened alert of convenience. Communication, we, we get it, communication is important, but how we communicate is what we're talking about. Not just we need to, or what to communicate, how we do it. Personalization we've talked about, being stronger at giving messages around, you know, not just the product and the price, the four P's of marketing for those who are marketers, that's here, but how we do it is elevating. Capabilities of the website itself, the actual functionality. We gotta get better understanding our navigation, our search, our, our we call it path to purchase, the overall funnel of the customer. Those capabilities and technology enhancements and being agile with that, testing things, figuring out that even though my website looks one way and yours looks another, it may work for me because of the way my customers shop on my website. There's a certain flair of consumer behavior for every website and ultimately care. Customers and not just customer service, we don't want to wait till the end of a problem to say we care about you. It's the entire experience of a consumer. We care about you from the beginning with some authentic marketing through the website experience. We care that you find what you're looking for, making sure it is the right product with the right message and the right price. And then obviously post purchase, very focused on customer service, but treating you well with loyalty and programs afterwards. So all four of these must be done correctly and cohesively. So we go beyond the four P's of marketing today, still fundamental, but now we elevate those four P's of marketing with the four C's of e-commerce. And these are just some charts. Again, I wanted to provide examples of what you know, you'll see in the courseware as far as beyond just some great paragraphs, some, some diagrams that can help you teach the course or understand it as a student, right? The, the, the goal of the e-commerce book for the most part, is the funnel of the customer. Remember, the experience is very important. So on the left here, we introduced early on the e-commerce marketing funnel, which is really the path to purchase from when they visit a website through the steps it takes to purchase. Now, we as consumers understand this, right? We understand we get to a website, we view a product, and we go down, add it to cart, and purchase. But it's along the way, the steps of the funnel that we teach, conversion optimization is part of this, is a, is a, is a topic to the right on how to move customers down the funnel, the marketing elements, the functionality, the demand planning, so we can continue you know, bringing that customer through the funnel. And like I said, we teach this topic and other met models and methods of conversion rate optimization. This is about how to just increase that ability to raise your conversion rate through insights, through analytics, and, and one thing we talk about too is testing the e-commerce environment. So what's in the courseware? Last slide here, and we'll get into some Q&A. 
These are the chapters that are outlined. Um, more information at this link. You can already find it on stukit.com, higher ed, e-commerce. Um, it's all there for you as well, but I thought I'd list it out here just so you're aware of what we're here, here to offer. The, the titles of the chapters really reflect the subject matter where we have some chapters focused specifically on key areas like supply chain, um, you know, IT and, and cybersecurity. We do talk about strategy, consumer behavior, and, uh, and much more. So we also have a lot of resources we're here to offer you. Um, if you're familiar with Stu Kent, we'd want to make sure we give you as much or, you know, maybe just enough to get you going. You know, this is a very customizable program. We do offer, though, a pretty full suite of uh, kind of get in that course and run with it or take pieces of it that make sense for you. I'm also a Stu Kent professor myself. I've used other courseware. I understand, you know, it's a really good opportunity to bring it to your classroom. We've got plenty of assignments uh, via case studies. I call them application artifacts, kind of the kind of things you'll do as an e-commerce professional, assignments, lesson plans, lecture slides, example syllabuses for eight week or six week format. And, by, and upon request, if this is a new program for you or a new course, um, I've seen it already where it's brand new to some colleges, you know, or they've had one in their catalog, but it's been dormant because you haven't found a good uh, set of content to deliver yet. So if you need to repropose this, and I understand that I've done this several times to propose a, a new course into your curriculum, it takes time and you need that thing called a course proposal. We have a template we can help build for you to ensure you're successful that you can tailor to your own. Uh, decision makers, but we're here to help you with that if that's of interest. We also have great expert sessions in there. We have three today and more to come over time uh, with some key experts in the field of certain areas like conversion rate optimization, like digital marketing for e-commerce and much more. But behind the scenes though, I can already tell you, Stu Kent has a great support network that's going to make sure you're successful, not just adopting the courseware, but making sure you're using it to the best of your ability into the course. So final poll. Then we'll get some Q&A. Who said artificial intelligence does not replace human intelligence? It augments human innovation. Was it A, me, B, Jeff Bezos, who I think runs Amazon, C, this guy called Elon Musk, or was it D, my favorite guy at night, Jimmy Fallon? Let's just drift to the poll and see what you guys think. <laughs> we got a couple Elon Musk. That's great. And Jimmy Fallon. If Jimmy Fallon actually said that too, I would be pretty you know, pretty excited. That's awesome. But yeah, uh, of course, it was uh, it was a me. Um, so thank you for that. Thanks for uh, partaking in the poll as a, a fun opportunity. All right, with that said, I'm going to um, hand it over to uh, Darlin and the team at Stu Kent. If there's any questions that we can answer, we'd be happy to do that at this time. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that was fantastic, Kyle. Thank you so much. We do have some questions, but if you have any more, please keep them coming. Um, but the first question we received are, what are some key metrics to track in any e-commerce model? Yeah, so what's really important is uh, traffic is a very straightforward uh, measurement. You know, how successful are you at driving traffic to your site and knowing where that traffic is coming from? Um, it's a competitive landscape. You have so many choices uh, how to be found. Google search, so making sure you're good at search engine optimization, uh, maybe paid ads on Google. you got to be found. Um, so one of the key metrics, first off, is if you're newer, um, whether B2B, B2C, uh, we also have C2C out there, and other and direct to consumer, which by the way, the book does cover all the different uh, models of e-commerce, not just B2C and B2B. We do highlight the others because they're emerging. It's traffic. It's understanding that in um, in your on on your traffic, who's a what the who the customers are, knowing them really well on their attributes, using analytics to find out you know, what they're looking at, what they're viewing. Those kinds of fundamentals are really important for any model because you just want to get really familiar with your customers and their behavior. Awesome. Love that. Uh, the next question, with all the growth in online commerce over the past two decades, why are we returning to an almost obsolete term in e-commerce or are we redefining it? Red redefining, or we can call it reimagining. Um, because you saw the charts earlier, it's going to continue to grow year over year and take the share of uh, retail business. And we're reimagining it. We're reimagining it for three reasons. One, the pandemic has shown us what we're good at and not good at as e commerce business, right? When consumers' uh, needs changed on how they shop online and what they were looking for and the supply chain uh, unfortunate uh, uh, disruption that happened, we found our weak spots in e commerce. And so we're trying to circumvent them. 
technology is a second pillar, right? As technology gets better, uh, what we can do to offer better experiences and market to our customers better and fulfill supply, that's also a key area we have to reimagine. And then three is organizational culture. There, we, we can see it out there today. There's some uh, e-commerce brands that are very good at it, embracing technology, being you know ahead of the trends and knowing what to do next and not really learning their customer behavior and analytics. And there's some who are behind. And we're always going to see that in business, no matter what. Some competitors are going to be on it, some are not. But we're seeing that, that volatility now that you have to embrace this and reimagine your e-commerce experience. Yeah, there's so much happening in this industry, but that's, that's, that's great. Um, the next question is kind of just, what are your thoughts on this? But what, are, what do you think will be the trend in how delivery is made? Do you think there will be electronic trucks or drones? Um, what are your thoughts? Um, at minimum, we're going to see more companies and try to advance to more same day shipping as able larger retailers with their fulfillment. Um, Amazon set the, set the groundwork for that. Right. Um, but not every brand is going to be Amazon. We're going to want to see more of that though, as consumers. That's why I made a joke earlier in the poll about two minute shipping. Well, same day. I mean, it's very convenient. Um, a lot more fulfillment from retail stores themselves, you know, more, uh, more stores. And this has been going on for a little while, but we're seeing more of it where we're treating a store, extra brick and mortar store as a fulfillment center. So that way we can hit a local radius better. So I'm, we're seeing more of that to at least get closer to same day, if not next day shipping, um, and just really, really figuring out the transportation model to get faster to our customers doorsteps. Great, great. And then these next few questions are around your courseware. We have a question on, do you cover omni-channel strategy in your courseware? 100% and, and we, we call it omni-channel and at some point unified commerce, definitely. Great, love to hear that. Um, and then briefly, can you please briefly outline the hands-on activities in the courseware? Sure, we're gonna focus on um, a lot of information around building buyer personas is one thing. Really, when we look at the analytics section too, we have an opportunity to become hands-on with Google Analytics, so which is free to students and anybody, but we take the approach also in that to teach the metrics, whole chapter, uh, I think chapter five on e-commerce analytics, and we integrate kind of some of the Google best practices in that, so there's a hands-on approach there. Um, there's other artifacts of strategy planning or case scenarios on how would you make a recommendation to improve an e-commerce business model or a technology assessment as well. You get out there and actually review um, real technology providers in e-commerce, whether it's platforms or other types of technology and get familiar with some of those technologies. So you really try to build a, a what's out there type mentality while still in integrating those kind of scholarly disciplines you need to have. Fantastic, yeah, students need to be ready to go when they graduate, but. All right, the last question about the courseware is, is all the information in the courseware related to the United States or is there any mention of Canadian privacy laws as an example? But it looks like this question came from Kathy, who I'm assuming teaches in Canada. Yeah, no, good question. Um, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you if I remember if we covered the Canadian data privacy law in the chapter, we do cover a few. Good question, but we do hit, we do talk about some global pieces of business and in general, some of the material is very standard anyways, no matter where you operate. But I understand your question being more about the consumers there and the kind of data privacy regulations. Um, so great question. Uh, but I do know that a lot of the material, though, would be global in nature because of the common challenges, infrastructure of e-commerce that no matter where you are would participate in. We talk about the external environment and assessing competitors and a framework and modeling of how to analyze your competition. Um, but, you know, that specific law, great question. I want to promise you that I do, do have that answer. It's on my mind. Awesome. Let's see. Something just came in. Yes. Um, global e-commerce because mm -hmm. the internet is global. But yes. Yeah. And we, we, we started out the gate with that same figure I showed you about worldwide sales. And then, yes, there are some U.S.-based brands we talked about. We do introduce a couple other international brands, too. Alibaba's mentioned huge, obviously, internationally. Uh, we do talk about some other uh, business models as well that kind of are, are global in nature. So yeah, definitely. Well, great. Well, that's where we'll wrap up. But thank you, Kyle, for sharing your insightful thoughts to the future of e-commerce education. And thank you to each one of you for joining us today. There are so many incredible insights shared. And just as a reminder, we will be sharing the slides and the recording after the event. 
We'll also share any of these resources that you saw pop up in the handout as we share two assignments, lesson plan, and lecture slides that you can use in your own classroom. Um, additionally, as a special guest or a special gift for attending today's event, we're offering free instructor access to Kyle Allison's e-commerce courseware. Um, with instructor access, you'll be able to preview the entire courseware, including lesson plans, assignments, lecture slides, and so much more. So go ahead and click on the link to get your free access. We also host many virtual events throughout the year, and we're always looking to partner with educators to share new insights for business, marketing, and communication professors. So if you enjoyed today's event and are interested in speaking at future webinars, please take a moment to click on the link on your screen to apply to speak. But Thank you all for coming here and we hope you enjoyed today's session and we thank you for your participation in the chat. All right, we continue to, or we appreciate your continued support and hope you have a wonderful day and weekend. And if you're somewhere snowy, stay warm, but um, we hope you remember to stay current with Stugent. Thank you.